Greetings, Boogie fans! Michael here, and to this day, the only gym leader to not have a specific type specialty is Blue in the Johto games. Other gym leaders use Pokemon not of their specific type, but they're still considered to be specialists for a particular type. But what if every gym leader was like Blue? In this video, I'm gonna be giving full teams of six to every gym leader, except Blue, that are type diverse. They'll keep their ace Pokemon, but then the rest of their team will be Pokemon from their regional decks that I think generally suit them without necessarily falling into their type category. Some types will overlap, but it shouldn't be more than two or three instances of the same type on one team. First up is Brock, and for him and the other Kanto gym leaders, I'll be selecting Pokemon from both Kanto and Johto. It makes for more interesting teams, but it also makes sense as post-game battles in the Johto games, like Blue. Brock's team would be his ace, Steelix, evolved from Onix, Crobat and Fortress, since he used them in the anime, Aerodactyl, since the old Amber is from the Pewter Museum, Clefable, because he likes to dig for fossils in Mount Moon, and Ditto, since he wants to be a Pokemon breeder. And you can't really be a good Pokemon breeder without a Ditto. Next is Misty. Her team would be her ace Starmie, then Togetic slash Togekiss, depending on the generation, due to the ones she had in the anime, Alakazam and Victory Bell, since in most games, Abra and Bellsprout are easily found near Cerulean Cape, her preferred date spot, Nidoqueen, because it's blue and can learn Surf without actually being water type, and Dragonite, since if she spent enough time in the water, she'd eventually find a Dratini. Next is Lieutenant Surge. His team would be his ace Raichu, and then the rest of his team would have something to do with his time in the military. Electrode, because it's a bomb? I know he already uses Electrode at one point, but as long as I don't have too many electric types, I can snag other Pokemon that he uses. Pidgeot, because he was a pilot. Machamp, because he likes Pokemon with guts, and Machamp literally has that. Octillery because it's partially based on a tank, and Blastoise because it literally has guns. Next is Erica. Bulbapedia says she only collects Pokemon if she considers them attractive, though her definition of attractive seems to include varieties only a botanist could love. Which I must say is quite the dig at Victory Bell, Vileplume, and Tangela. But in general, I'll try to give her pretty Pokemon. She keeps her ace Vileplume, then Rapidash, Blissey, and Seeking would be the quote unquote pretty Pokemon. The last two would be Hypno and Snorlax, which I don't really count as pretty, but they work for her since she's often dozing off. Next is Koga. I know he's an Elite Four member in the Johto games, but I did say every gym leader. Also, I just wanna say I would totally give him a Greninja if I had access to the whole natural decks, but I'm sticking with regional decks. I'll be giving him ninja adjacent Pokemon, or just mean and nasty Pokemon in general. According to Bulbapedia, he likes the despair and horror that poison type Pokemon can inflict on others. Yikes. He keeps his ace from the Elite Four, Crobat, Fortress from his Elite Four team, Sneasel slash Weavile, depending on the generation, due to its cruelty and stealthiness, Starmie because of Ninja Star slash Shurikens, Kaputops because of its built-in weapons that loosely remind me of Kunai, and Hitmonlee to represent hand-to-hand -hand combat. Plus its eyes look kind of like a ninja mask. Kind of. Next is Janine, Koga's daughter and another ninja, and thus someone who tends to use very similar Pokemon. In fact, her team would be mostly the same, but her ace is instead Venomoth. And since she doesn't use Fortress, I'll put in another Pokemon that she uses, Ariados. Ha ha, it is I, Gruntip Boy, here to regale you with a tale of a game that I have been loving lately. I have to ask, is there any particular reason that as of late you've just been talking about your interests with me rather than stealing from me? To be clear, I much prefer this. I'm just confused. I've been getting my theft urges out by taking candy from babies. Grunty boy, that's awful. It's either you or them, pal. Anyways, the sponsor of this video is Ace Defender. It's a high quality RPG masterpiece that combines RPG battling with tower defense elements. It has 40 plus chapters and 48 heroes with more added all the time, all of which have deep backstories and you can level up, combine, and equip gear to your heroes and create your perfect lineup. Wow, that sounds really fun. Oh, I haven't even told you about Brenda yet. Ace Defender has both PvE dungeons and trials and PvP combat arenas to fight other players. And you can speed up the gameplay to your liking. The new hero, Brenda the Demon Spear, does well in both game modes, having the ability to deal massive damage, limit the opponent's damage, and recover health on her own. Aw. Good for Brenda. I know she's killing it. Literally. There's also a mysterious new world called Realm of Deities available soon, where you can build your castle, develop technology, and train soldiers to conquer the city for endless treasures. 
On the map, you can defeat all kinds of monsters, fight with allies, and gain power through magical research. Ooh, and let me guess, newcomers who download the game using the link in the description below will get some really awesome stuff. Specifically, 10 Royal Recruit tickets after completing levels two through eight. You can use the tickets by clicking the Sky City, then Tavern, then Recruit 10 times. Hey, I thought I was doing this. Oh, it just looked fun, so I wanted to participate. Fair enough. Anyways, be sure to go download Ace Defender using the link in the description below. And now I'm off to go play the game myself. Just don't take any more candy from babies on the way, all right? Ugh, fine. I'll steal candy from adults. Ta-ta! Next is Sabrina. She would of course keep her ace Alakazam and then she'd have Venomoth because for some reason she uses one on multiple occasions. Next would be Hitmonchan. Since she did crush the fighting gym, thus turning it into the fighting dojo, she'd get one as a reward. Next would be Ninetales, since it can supposedly understand human speech, lay thousand year curses, and be literally a fusion of nine wizards, apparently. Weird. But also definitely fits the Sabrina vibe. Honestly, I feel like Ninetales should have been psychic or ghost type from the beginning. The last two would be Gengar, since she ends up with Ash's Haunter in the anime, and Pseudo Wudo. In Black 2 and White 2, she is an actress, and Pseudo Wudo's whole thing is acting. Next is Blaine, a scientist who would therefore use science related Pokemon, AKA Pokemon that the scientist trainer class uses. He has Arcanine and Rapidash, since his ace differs between the Kanto and Johto games. Then the scientist related Pokemon would be Magneton slash Magnezone, depending on the version, Weezing, Porygon 2, and Electro. The final Kanto gym leader is Giovanni, since remember that Blue already has a diverse team. Giovanni's team would be his ace Rhydon, then Kangaskhan, Persian, and Murkrow slash Honchkrow, depending on the generation, all three being non-ground types that he uses at least once. The last two would be Arbok and Hypno, two commonly used Team Rocket grunt Pokemon. Next up is Johto. First up is Faulkner. He keeps his ace Pidgeot, and then he'd have Victory Bell as an homage to Violet City's Sprout Tower, Gengar since it's found at Sprout Tower, Heracross since it's found near Violet City and he would like that it can fly, Muck since he regularly visits Celadon City where it's found, and Porygon 2 or Porygon Z since he could get it at the Celadon Game Corner. Next is Bugsy. He keeps his ace Scizor, and then he has Slowbro evolved from a Slowpoke that he caught in the nearby Slowpoke well. Then the rest of his team would be Pokemon that would be helpful with camping, since he's dressed like a Boy Scout. Magmar or Magmortar for making campfires, Ampharos as a light source, Delibird to carry food and keep it cold, and Blissey for any first aid. Next up is Whitney, a gym leader well known for having terrible taste in Pokemon. So if her team were type diverse, it would reflect that. She keeps her vile ace mill tank, and then she also uses Jinx, Lickitung slash Licky Licky, Mr. Mime, and Delibird, four other Pokemon from Kanto and Johto that I do not like. She'd also use an Azumarill, a water type that I do not dislike, but it represents the tears from the tantrum she throws when losing. Next is Morty. He keeps his ace Gengar, and then would use Raticate, Weezing, Crobat, Kingler, and Magmar slash Magmortar, Pokemon you can find in the Burnt Tower a place Morty frequents for his research. Next is Chuck. He keeps his ace Polyrath and then would have Golem as a boulder he can practice lifting. Then Tentacruel since it and Tentacruel are the only surf Pokemon in Cienwood. Wobbuffet since it's literally a punching bag. Tauros because I feel like stopping its charges would be a training method he would like to use. And Scizor because I think it would be a good Pokemon for him to spar with provided it keeps its pincers closed. Next is Jasmine. She would have her ace Steelix, Amphi the Ampharos, Rhydon slash Rhyperior since she apparently used to train rock types, Mantine since she appears in Sunny Shore City and Mantike is caught nearby, Electrode because her affinity for Magnemites means she likely has a fondness for round electric type Pokemon, and Kingler since it's easily found in Olivine City. Next is Price. He keeps his ace Piloswine or Mamoswine depending on the version, then uses Gyarados due to the nearby Lake of Rage, Machamp to carry him when his elderly joints get sore, which is not weird to say Machamp literally carries you in Alola. Plus Machoke can be found in wintry climates, particularly in Sinnoh, Ninetales because of its supposedly long lifespan, Blastoise since Wartortle is a symbol of longevity and popular among older people, and Crobat since it's found in the Ice Path. Next is Claire. She uses her ace Kingdra along with the Gyarados, Aerodactyl, and Charizard she already uses at some point or another. She then would have Tyranitar and Steelix, other reptilian-ish Pokemon that have somewhat of a dragon vibe to them. 
Now on to Hoenn, where I'll be using the Oris Hoenn decks for simplicity's sake. First up is Roxanne. She keeps her ace nose pass slash probo pass, and then Cacturn, Flygon, and Sand Slash. Roxanne has shown a clear love for fossils, so I think she'd end up with at least some of the desert Pokemon, since that's a good place to find fossils. Speaking of fossils, I think she should have one of the two Hoenn fossils, Armaldo specifically. It's a rock type she's used before, but this is the only one beyond her ace. Finally would be Alakazam. She's an honor student and Alakazam is very smart. Next is Brawly. He keeps his ace Hariyama, then would use Gyarados and Waylord, two Pokemon skilled at making the big waves he'd need to practice his surfing. He'd also use Crobat, Alakazam, and Agron. He trains a lot in Granite Cave and the base forms of these Pokemon are found there. Next is Watson. He keeps both his aces, Magneton slash Magnezone and Manectric, but I personally believe Manectric is the only Pokemon that ever should have been his ace. Probo passes next due to the magnetic fields in New Mauville, Tentacruel and Waylord due to inhabiting Sea Mauville, and Machamp, which would have been helpful in the new and Sea Mauville construction projects. Next is Mommy, sorry, Flannery. She keeps her ace Torkoal plus Camera Up because I feel like one extra fire type is fine. Then she would have Machamp and Grumpig caught on the Jagged Pass. Azumarill since Meryl can be caught nearby in Emerald and it can learn Scald to help maintain the hot springs. Then finally Solrock to represent her sunlight strategy. Next is Norman. Slacking sticks around and then he'd have Starmie since it can be found in Olivine City where he and the player's family moved from. He'd also have Hariyama since his gym reminds me of a dojo and then using Swellow, Crawdont and Mightyena after that. Pokemon available in and around Petalburg. Next is Winona. She keeps her ace Altaria, and then she'd have Sceptile due to the jungle of Fortree, Flygon since it can fly without actually being a flying type, Kecleon since they're everywhere around Fortree, Castform since I feel like she'd visit the Weather Institute and they'd give her one, Hail yeah! And Absol because it appears nearby on Route 120. Next is Tate and Liza. They keep Solrock and Lunatone since they both need their aces for it to make sense. Then Plusle and Minun, another pair of Pokemon, and then finally I'd give them Sharpedo and Waylord two Pokemon easily found in Mosty. Next is Wallace. Wallace excels in contests, so he'll use pretty contesty Pokemon. Basically Pokemon with the same vibe as Milotic, his ace. Rose Raid, Gardevoir, Delcaddy, Ninetales, and Masquerain. Masquerain isn't as pretty as the other ones, but it is flashy. Finally for Hoenn is Juan, who would basically be in the same situation, just replace Milotic with his ace Kingdra. Now for Sinnoh, and I'll be selecting from the Platinum Sinnoh decks, the only good one. Rourke keeps his ace Rampardos, Golem from his team and Orberg Mine, Crobat from Orberg Mine, Machamp and Rapidash from Route 207 near Orberg, and Golduck from Orberg Gate. Next is Gardenia. She would have her ace Rose Raid plus Gengar from the old Chateau. She's gotten over her fear of ghosts. I've decided. Golduck, which can be caught in Eterna, then Beautifly, Lopany, and Honchcrow from Eterna Forest, which is where I assume she got her Budu. Next is Maylene. She keeps her ace Lucario, then adds Frostlass since she likes to trek through the cold herself, Snorlax since she is amusingly a big eater despite her size, Ambipom because her hairstyle reminds me of its ears, Scizor as a non-fighting sparring partner like I gave to Chuck, and for Defog going through the segment of Mount Coronet to get to Snowpoint, and Bronzong since it's found in that same part of Mount Coronet. Next is Wake. He keeps his ace Floatzel, then has Machamp, Electivire, and Snorlax, which are big and wrestler-like, which fits since Wake is a wrestler. Seraptor and Yan Mega are the last two, since both can be found in the Great Marsh and can learn Defog, which Wake uses to keep the fog out of Pastoria. Next is Fantina. She has her ace Miss Magius, but then she also has Driftblim, since that's her ace in contests. Since she is a contest star, she would use cute or pretty Pokemon, like Milotic, Lopany, Pachirisu, and Blissey. Milotic is there because of Wallace, but the other three are evolved forms of Pokemon allowed into Amity Square. Next is Byron. He would keep his ace Bastiodon and then have Crobat and Golem from the interior of Iron Island, Pelipper and Tentacruel from the outside of Iron Island, and to potentially transport him between Canalave and the island, and then Machamp for dealing with obstacles within Iron Island. I know they all have to do with Iron Island, but like, the dude lived there. Next is Candice. She gets to have both Frostlass and Abomasnow since she's had both as aces. She also gets Metacham, a non-ice Pokemon she has used before. Since she controls access to Snowpoint Temple, she's also definitely been in there and caught Pokemon there like Crobat and Steelix. She also likes fashion and romance, so Lopany fits with that. Finally for Sinnoh is Volkner. He has both his aces, Luxray and Electivire, plus Ambipom and Octillery from his team. Volkner is one of those gym leaders that has a specific type specialty, 
but then also has a weirdly diverse team. Like Ambipom and Octillery, weird that they're there, but made my job easier for this video. His last two would be Bronzong and Machamp, two Pokemon that would be helpful in assembling his gear gym puzzles. Now onto Unova, picking from the black two, white two Unova decks. The first gym leader is actually three, Silen, Chili, and Cress. Since these characters are basically the same person, just three times, I'm giving one team to all three of them and just, you just swap out the monkey. They'd have Stoutland since they use Lillipup in the gym, Crustle and Stunfisk since Silent uses them in the anime, and then some Pokemon that would help with cooking. Skarmory for its feathers, which can be made into swords, or kitchen knives, and Vanillix, so they never have to worry about their ice maker breaking down. Next is Lenora. She has her ace Watchog, and then Archeops and Caracosta, since she gives out the fossils in Black 2 and White 2. Then Dragonite, since the museum has a Dragonite skeleton, and Seismitoad and Conkeldur from nearby Pinwheel Forest. Next is Charon, who's in a unique position, since while he doesn't use a diverse team as a gym leader, he did use one as a rival. His ace Stoutland stays, and then the rest of his team are from his time as a rival. Lyperd, Unpheasant, Gigalith, Haxorus, and then one of the monkeys. Next is Roxy. She keeps her ace Scolipede, then has sound-related Pokemon since she's a rocker. Audino, Wigglytuff, Seismitoad, Bronzong, and Maractus. Next is Berg. I would love to give him Smeargle, but it's not in the Univadex. He keeps his ace Levani, then also has Muck and Raticate from the Castelia Sewers, then has Unpheasant, Sock, and Lilligant caught in Pinwheel Forest. He regularly travels back to Nacreen City, where he's from, so it would make sense that he would catch Pinwheel Forest Pokemon while passing through. Next is Elisa. She keeps her ace Substrika, and then the rest of her Pokemon are ones I could see a supermodel using. Superior for its vanity, Levani since it can make clothes, Lopini and Ninetales for being pretty, and Zoroark for changing its appearance. Next is Clay. His team would be his ace Excadrill, and then Pokemon found in Twist Mountain, which he owns. Gigalith, Swoobat, Conkeldur, Heatmore, and Beartick. Next is Skyla. She keeps her ace Swana, then has Behiyem and Chandelure from the Celestial Tower, which she visits at times, then Haxorus, Golduck, and Altaria from the Nature Preserve. If she's the only person that can fly there, she would definitely catch stuff there. Next is Bryson. He keeps his ace Beartick, and then has Golurk and Drudigan from Dragon Spiral Tower. His other three Pokemon are ones he uses as an actor in Pokestar Studios. Mandibuzz, Escavalier, and Bisharp. Next are Drayden, and Iris, which I'll be lumping together since in black and white, they had the same teams. They keep their ace Haxorus and then have Archeops, Agron, and Lapras from Iris's champion team. We can add on Crocodile and Sviper, some more reptilian and therefore somewhat dragon-like Pokemon. Finally for Unova is Marlin. It's tough to give him a non-water type team that fits him since his whole thing is that he's a swimmer, so instead it makes sense to give him Pokemon that live nearby Humalau. His ace Jellicent, then Electros, Swoobat, and Gigalith from Seaside Cave, and then Amoongus and Mianxiao from Route 22. Also, I haven't said it yet, you should subscribe. It'd be great. Go ahead. Next is Kalos. In previous videos, I've talked about how the Kalos gym leaders should have had mega evolutions, at least the later ones should have, but I'm not gonna worry about it for this video since these teams are never gonna happen, so I'm not gonna shoehorn myself into having to give them a mega. First is Viola. Since she's a photographer, I like to think she'd spend a lot of time in the neighboring routes taking pictures of and catching the wild Pokemon there. Her team would be her ace Vivian, plus Pyroar, Lucario, Azumarill, Roseraid, and Dunsparce. All Pokemon whose base forms are found in the routes bordering Santaloon City. After that is Grant. He keeps both Aurorus and Tyrantrum since neither one of the base forms is the clear ace in the gym battle. The rest of his Pokemon will be Poliwrath, Machamp, Drodigan, and Electivire. Grant is a rock climber, and all these Pokemon can learn rock climb. Next is Corina. She keeps her aces Mega Lucario and Halucha, one being her true ace in my eyes, and the other one just being her random gym battle ace. After that would be Mr. Mime, since it's in the Reflection Cave and its invisible walls could be used as skating ramps, and then Talonflame, Alakazam, and Weavile. Karina's love of skating clearly shows a preference for going fast, and these Pokemon are quite fast. Next is Ramos. He keeps his ace Go-Goat, then would have Pokemon that would assist him in his life as an elderly gardener. Scizor to trim excess growth, Vaporeon to water plants, Diggersby to help till soil, Volcarona to provide sunlight even on cloudy days, and Machamp to both carry Ramos when he gets tired and move any heavy pots should the need arise. Next is Clement. 
He would keep his ace Heliolisk, then have Alakazam for its intelligence to help him with his inventions, Probopass to help with the magnetism he clearly has to deal with, Noivern for a quick transport to the top of the Prism Tower, Conkeldur to help with construction of the physically larger inventions, and Rotom for machine possession. I know it's another electric type, but he doesn't have one as of now, and it would 100% help him out, provided that it's obedient. Next is Valerie. Bulbapedia claims that she appears to have a deep appreciation for all that is beautiful, so this will be another team of pretty Pokemon. Just without my Lodic this time, because it's not in the Kalos decks. Her team is her Ace Sylveon, then Vivian, Roseraid, Starmie, Altaria, and Aurorus. Next is Olympia. I wanted to give her a team of Pokemon associated with space, but the problem is that space Pokemon tend to be psychic type. In fact, the only one that's not a psychic type and not Palkia is Clefable, and that's not even in the Kalos decks. Instead, I'll go with Pokemon found near Anastar City. She has her ace, female Meowstic, then Mamoswine to navigate the neighboring Route 17, and then a Conkeldur, Torkoal, and Agron from the neighboring Route 18, and then a Starmie. I know it's another psychic type, but it's space related and she doesn't use one and I wanted to give her one. Finally for Kalos is Wolfric. Since he frequents and cares for Pokemon in the Pokemon Village, I think his team would be made up of Pokemon adopted from there. His initial ace, Avalog, followed by Zoroark, Amoongus, Noctowl, Gothitelle, and Ludicolo. Next is Alola, which does not have gym leaders, but like I've done with previous gym leader focused videos, I'll treat the Kahunas as gym leaders for the sake of this video and I'll be selecting teams from the most expanded regional decks, which is Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. First is Hala. He keeps his Ace Crabominable, then has Decidueye, Incineroar, and Primarina. Since he's the one to provide the starter Pokemon, I like to think he has access to more and could fully train them. Then as Melee Melee Island Kahuna, he would use Melee Melee Island Pokemon, like Snorlax and Salamence, two Pokemon only on Melee Melee Island and none of the other ones. Next is Olivia. She keeps her Ace Midnight Lycanroc, then has Alolan Dugtrio due to Diglett's Tunnel being near her home of Kony Kony City. Like Hala, I wanna give her Pokemon only found on her island, Akala Island, those being Lantern, Noctowl, Zarina, and Magmortar. Next is Nanu. He keeps his ace, Alolan Persian, then has an Arcanine. He's a police officer and Growlithe is the most commonly used police Pokemon. Like with the other two Kahunas, I'll fill out his team with Pokemon only found on his native island. Golurk, Electric, Fortress, and Drampa. Finally is Hapu. She keeps her ace Mudsdale, then has Sudowoodo, Machamp, and Miltank. Ugh, I know. All Pokemon found around her house on Ancient Pony Path. The last two Pokemon will be Pony Island only Pokemon, Alolan Exeutor, and Waylord. And now finally, Galar. I'll be selecting their teams from Pokemon in the original Galar decks, plus Pokemon from the Expansion Pass Dexes, since we've seen that the gym leaders are very clearly capable of traveling to the Isle of Armor in Crown Tundra. Milo is first, keeping his ace, Eldegoss. His ace is Flapple or Appleton in later battles, but it's only one or the other, depending on the version, and I think I'm just gonna cut those because it gets too confusing. He then would have Dubwool and Boltund, evolved forms of the Pokemon seen in the gym and on the farms. He'd then have the Crawdont that can be found in Turfield's River, Diggersby to help till soil, and Corviknight to help scatter seeds from the air. Next is Nessa. She keeps her ace Gigantamax Dreadnaw, then has a Galarian Stunfisk from nearby Galar Mine number two, Toxtricity because the statues in Holbury inspired her to get her own, I've decided, and Pokemon that go along with her modeling career, Zarina, Ninetales, and Gardevoir. Next is Kabu. He keeps his ace Gigantamax Cinescorch, but then since he's from Hoenn, he would use Hoenn native Pokemon to remind him of home. Shift Tree, Pelipper, Gardevoir, Flygon, and Absol. Next is B. She keeps her ace Gigantamax Machamp, then would have Wobbuffet to train on as a punching bag, then Drapion, Haxorus, Hippowdon, and Dusk Noir. All Pokemon found near Stowon's side with strong physical attack, which is her preferred style. Next is Alistair. He keeps his ace Gigantamax Gengar, and while I think B would be more drawn to Pokemon on Route 6, I think Alistair would be more drawn to Glimwood Tangle, using Ndidi, Hatterene, Passimian, and Shenotic. I do think he would get one Pokemon from Route 6 though, Torkoal, whose smoke he could use to escape people giving him the attention that he desperately does not want. Next is Opal. She keeps her ace Gigantamax all creamy, then has Lantern and Malamar, since Chinchow and Inkay can be found hanging around Balanlea. Orangaroo from Glenwood Tangle also fits her well, and Trevenant is another Pokemon from there that doesn't overlap. Finally, I'll give her Blissey. She loves pink, and it's a pink Pokemon that's not Fairy-type. 
Next is Gordy. He keeps his Ace Gigantamax Colossal, then uses Pokemon from the area surrounding Surchester. I think Sandaconda, Phalanx, Conkeldur, Kingler, and Dusknoir suit him best. I intentionally didn't give him any ice types since apparently he and his mother Melanie are not on the best of terms, so I feel like he wouldn't really want to use her type. Hi, this line is gonna sound different because I accidentally skipped Melanie during the first recording, so now I'm recording this line at home. Melanie keeps her Gigantamax Lapras, then also uses Pokemon from around Surchester, just no rock types for the same reason Gordy didn't use ice types. Golurk, Mandibuzz, Bronzong, Gastrodon, and Pincurchin. Next is Piers. His team is easier to build, just Pokemon capable of making a lot of noise. His Ace Obstagoon, a low key toxicity that he already uses, Rillaboom, Exploud, Noivern, and Seismitoad. Next is Raihan, who already uses a diverse roster of Pokemon. His Ace Gigantamax Duraludon, along with Sandaconda, Gigalith, and Torkoal. All Pokemon he uses at some point or another, covering more than half his team without overlapping a single type. Since he likes using weather strategies, I'll fill out his last two Pokemon with a Rain Summoner and a Hail Summoner, Pelipper and Obama Snow. Next is Bead. He keeps his Ace Gigantamax Hatterene, and although it overlaps, I wanted to keep one Pokemon from his time as a Psychic Specialist right Gothitelle. I'll add on Copperaja too, since after borrowing roses, I feel like he would appreciate its ability to shatter ancient relics. Since he tends to use more feminine designed Pokemon, I think Milotic, Zarina, and Salazzle would finish out his team well with a nice fire water grass core. Finally is Marnie. I don't really feel a need to do Clara and Avery since they're only in the minor leagues and they're more rivals than gym leaders at this point, so it's like, you're annoying anyways. Marnie keeps both her aces of Gigantamax Grimmsnarl and Morpeko, since Morpeko is her ace for the battles before the Champions Tournament. She also uses a Toxicroak a lot. I then think she'd go for Pokemon found around Spike Myth. Berserker, Jellicent, and Avalug. And there we have it, type diverse teams for every gym leader. I get why they have type specialties, but I think it'd be interesting to see a game where the gym leaders don't. Let me know which gym leader team was your favorite in the comments down below. Thanks so much for watching with an extra special thanks to my patrons over on Patreon who are helping support my channel independent of fluctuating YouTube ad rates. You can help support me in the same way. The link is in the description below. Also, if you want to check out some more of my fun Pokemon content, I recommend these videos here. All right, that's all I have for now. So until next time, big fans, gotta catch them all.